Renewable energy is energy that comes from resources which are continually replenished such as sunlight, wind, tides, waves and geothermal heat. About 16% of global final energy consumption comes from renewable resources with 10% of all energy from traditional biomass mainly used for heating and 3.4% from hydroelectricity. Our center of study today is the solar energy. Renewable energy is another way of powering homes, streets and even industries. The basic thing here is solar energy. But how do we tap solar energy? This week we visited Ubic Limited, a solar panel manufacturing company in Naivasha. Ubic East Africa is situated in Naivasha town, 100 kilometers west of Kenyan capital Nairobi. The company saw the light in 2009, being a joint venture between Dutch-based Ubink BV and Kenyan-based Lago Investment. The first solar modules came off the production line in the beginning of 2011. Ubink East Africa is majority owned by uh, Ubink in the Netherlands, uh, but we also have a large shareholder here, uh, who is the owner also of Chloride Excite. <coughs> Chloride Excite being the largest distributor in East Africa of uh, solar products. Five years ago the idea came up in the Netherlands that instead of corporate social responsibility giving things away, uh, we said in our company why don't we do a technology transfer. Yeah, so with that we mean let's bring one of our manufacturing expertise that we have in Europe and let's bring it to East Africa. The company is part of the Ubink Group which was founded in the Netherlands in 1896 with operations across Europe the United States and East Africa. Its core activity being to provide solutions to improve the energy efficiency and indoor climate of buildings. The financial sum investment in the factory is not clear, however it does not run into millions. Half of the funds came from the Dutch government's fund for renewable energies in underdeveloped countries. The other half meanwhile came from both Ubink and Ubink's partner Chloride Exide. We um, decided to come here to Kenya uh, because of several reasons. First of all, we found a very good partner in uh, Chloride Exide, uh, both in helping us in sales and distribution, but also Chloride makes their own batteries, so they understand local manufacturing. Uh, secondly, Kenya is the central hub for the whole of East Africa. So if you want to do something in East Africa, this is your place to start. Um, we've also found very good levels of education. At present, almost 98% of the rural population in Africa does not have access to grid power supply and is therefore severely hampered in its efforts to develop economically. The only readily available energy resources are high-pollution kerosene lamps and costly diesel generators that are maintenance heavy. Whereas most organizations will want to donate, Ubink felt it wise to invest and create solutions to powerless communities and at the same time create jobs to the community around. This was the need in East Africa. Currently the end customer, if they buy a product that comes from, uh, from Asia and they have a warranty issue, the chain to get a replacement is much more difficult for the end customer. And uh, whereas if they have an issue with us, through the distribution network, it reaches us very quickly. Two years down the line, Ubink is the first solar manufacturing company in East Africa, operating with an improved staff of 75, producing over 100 solar modules per day. The technology involved is delicate and Ubink had to train its staff to acquire this new technology in East Africa. The company has trained most of its staff on the job by inviting experts biannually from abroad who train young men and women working at the company as part of their plan of transferring the technology. The training that we provide is we first took three technically skilled people for a month to the Netherlands to be trained in our factory in the Netherlands. Uh, that gave them not only solar panel manufacturing stand, uh, knowledge, but also understanding the standards that we live by as a European company. What is work like at Ubink on a daily basis? The company manufactures and supplies crystalline photovoltaic modules suited for smaller off-grid solar system. This can be used in private residences, lighting in schools, and for water supply and telecommunications purposes. 
They range in size from 13 to 125 watts peak. We manufacture solar panels for uh, mainly the off-grid market. Solar PV panels gather sunshine and convert solar energy into electricity. The raw materials used are imported from France, Germany and Netherlands. Ishmael Abiasai is the quality operation manager at Ubing. Ishmael learned the trade here and is one of the staff members that was trained on the job. This is where we do production. Um, I will take you through the production process, how we assemble the solar PV panels from the components until we end up with the finished product. Yeah, this is where we start the process and uh, this is where we cut some of the components that go into the solar panel. Um, specifically, we have this material, which is um, the polymer material. Technically, this is what we call the encapsulant. This is the material that is going to hold the cells on the glass permanently when we do the process that we call lamination. So we cut the materials from here. We have, we have um, two types. There is this one, and then we have another type of material which goes to the back of the panel. So material preparation is done here before we get into real production. Without this material, you cannot uh, talk of uh, a solar panel. You will talk of loose components in a panel. But this material um, is what is going to gel and hold all the components together so that we can now talk of a solar panel. Because remember, before we get to a solar panel, there are loose components. Everything is in its own uh, piece. So this is material that we're going to use to uh, encapsulate so that we have all the components uh, uh, placed together. We call this cell testing. Um, it is an innovative way of us checking the quality of the cells. Before we use them into production, we'd want to know whether they are of the good output in terms of uh, wattage and current. So what we've done here is we've improvised a testing kit um, we have equipment in the industry which could do this, but we wanted to use our own innovation. The working principle is basically the same as to what the machine does, and we are able to measure the current that we are getting from the cells. For this process, voltage is not really a very a key critical component. However, current is a critical component because no current is what drives a lot, yeah? yeah? So we would want to measure the current that we are getting per cell. We have uh, designed an, a, a, a cut-off point of uh, two milliampers to be the right current that we are getting. However, again, I need to say, the current will differ with the size of the cell. These are two sizes of the cells. This will give a different current to what this will give. How a solar cell works, the bigger the area you expose, the higher the current that you'll get. Yeah, because now you are converting, um, um, you are converting solar energy into some electrical current. This this has been pre-cut. I would want to show you the process where we are cutting the cells, so that you understand how we are ending up with these sizes of cells. Before we use a cell, we would want to know whether it is going to give us the expected current. Because at the end of the day, our products have been designed to give specific outputs. The product at the end will meet the design intent. Universal size of a cell is about um, 6 inches by 6 inches or 156 millimeters by 156. Now, this cell as it is, um, we can use it to assemble bigger panels, talk of 130 watts and above. But for below 130, we need to cut this cell into a size that can give us the desired output. So we achieve the cutting using a laser technology. That is what is happening behind here. Maybe we could come close and see how we achieve the cutting. Basically, this is a laser machine. What we do is um, we arrange, it has three cutting slots. Maybe you'll see the beam traveling. It has three cutting slots. This is one, two, and three. So it can accommodate three cells at a time and cut them to the size that we want. The machine uses a software over there. So all we need to do at the design stage, we look at the size of the cell that we want. 
This has been cut. You, yeah, you see the lines, these are laser inscribings. Eh? So what it has done, it has not cut through the cell. Because if you cut through the cell, you damage the cell. We introduce what we call shunt resistance. That is, you've short-circuited the cell. So the laser beam is designed just to weaken the cell. Then we will basically snap them out and we say we've cut the cell. Now this will be used to make one product. This is another product. And these two will get into another product. So these are same sizes. Yeah, these are actually four products that we can make. One, two, and three. So this will go into a 20 watts. This will make a 60 watt. And this will make a 30 watt. Yeah. So that is the process that we use to cut the cell so that we can now end with the different sizes of the cell depending on the program we want to make. When we select, sometimes we, some cells break. This is what we generate. And du during cutting, that is what we get out. Sometimes they snap and, you know, the cells are very brittle. Remember solar cells are made of uh, silicon. Silicon is a very brittle material. So any small force applied to it literally damages the cell. Now stringing basically is um, joining the cells together so that we can have um, a couple of series, a couple of cells connected in series. Yeah. Now if you look around, you see we have some uh, silverish material, it's a special alloy material that we use to join the cells together. The process, as is being done here, is a manual version of the same process. The operator will weld on the blue side of the cell, which I forgot to mention over there. The blue side is the negatively charged side, and the gray side is the positively charged side. From the gray side of this cell, the welding material will go to the blue side of the next cell, so that it will be like positive to negative, positive to negative. Yeah, that is what we call a series connection. Yeah, so they will do that and will en uh, ensure that we have nine cells in, uh, in, 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 in series. And for like this one, how many cells are you putting on this one? 18 cells on a 30 watt uh, panel. One side where the, the, the welding material is exiting, if it exits on the positive side, we call these positive terminals. Now from stringing, we go to assembly. This is where now we bring in all the components in an effort to making a panel. The first component we bring is a solar glass. It's a special glass for solar. Um, first of all, it is a tampered glass, so you cannot break it so easily. Um, secondly, it is low ion. Uh, ion is a very poor conductor of UV. So if it, the glass had ion, like the normal house glasses, will prevent a lot of UV from going through. Um, after putting in the solar glass, now we put in the uh, encapsulant material. It is capable of withstanding elements of weather for up to 30 years. Because you know, this is going to remain inside this panel and the panel will be on the roof. It will be rained on. It will, there will be days when the sun is too hot. This material will not degenerate within 30 years. This is the material that we are now going to use to connect this string to the next and to the next and to the next until we end up with a circuit sort of. This, these two terminals is what eventually will uh, terminate into a junction box. Now the junction box is where the technician installing this panel will just plug in their cable and drop it down to the battery or to the appliance they want to power. Yes. Now from here, we have to design having the terminals inside already. Now, the next thing that we do at this process is to input our marketing sticker and our uh, traceability sticker. The information that we code inside this um, barcode, uh, for example, is when the panel was made, who was the operator, what type of cells were used. And this is our first fallback should this panel fail outside there. So our panels are attracting a warranty of 25 years. So that is how assembly is done. After this process, this panel can actually power an equipment. 
and you can already start using it. Only if you had a way of uh, ensuring that the components do not fall out. This machine, we call it a sun simulator. It also um, subjects the panel to international standard test conditions. So for example, we want to test these 30 watts. These are the, the yeah, these are the terminals that we made there. Of course, they are negative and positive, you need to know that. And after that, we will trigger the tests to just give a simple flash. That is it. And over here, we will be able to see the wattage that it gives, the current that it gives. The first uh, four parameters are critical to us. So if they fail that, the panel is, uh, is a dead one, so it cannot go out. Uh, probably there was a problem during assembly. Maybe an operator forgot to weld somewhere. Such kind of um, information is what you can get. What is standing here has passed visual inspection and has also passed electrical inspection. So these are good products. This is where we do now uh, put the frame on the panel. I will just want us to stand and see how the process is done. Normally breaks with the heat. Some of it cannot stand on UV for long, but these are special silicon made for solar. In fact, they say the insulation you give should be able to withstand 700 uh, volts DC. The process is that fast. You see, for the while that we've stood here, they've already done two. Yeah. Now, it depends on the size we are doing. Some are done.